Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, in the stock market, you can have great companies, innovative companies, cutting-edge companies, companies literally creating markets, right? New products, new innovations. And even though that company is one of the most creative and innovative companies out there, right? The stock price might still be in a bubble. In other words, so many investors may have been seduced by what the company is doing, that they've ignored market fundamentals, that they, dare I say, may have overpriced the company, right? For example, there are many in the investment world right now who think that Tesla, the electric car company, right? Great looking cars, uh, paradigm shift, uh, crazy innovation. But there are many who feel that Tesla, for all its innovation right now, is in a bubble, that the stock is overpriced, right? We need to bring that thinking to boxing, right? Certainly gamblers do. Vasil Lomachenko is an excellent fighter. He's an Olympic gold medalist. You've heard me sing his praises here online. But Vasil Lomachenko right now is a bit overpriced, right? As good a fighter as he is. He doesn't have the world's biggest punch, right? Regardless of the low blows thrown, he was getting bullied around the ring by Orlando Salido, right? Now, I believe it's because Vasil Lomachenko is in a bit of a market bubble that I feel the people analyzing the Gary Russell versus Johnny Gonzalez fight are having a hard time realizing that in my opinion Gary Russell is in a bit of a bubble right understand Russell's only loss was to Vasil Lomachenko people are viewing that as a loss to you know a great fighter but they're overvaluing Lomachenko now I made a video here earlier I encourage you to look at it I'm taking Johnny Gonzalez against Gary Russell. What I want people to do is to consider the possibility, just consider it, that Johnny Gonzalez might hit much harder than Vasil Lomachenko. Understand, while Lomachenko was fighting amateurs, Johnny Gonzalez was fighting the A-list of professionals. He's been around a long time. Right? He's your prototypical boxer puncher. Let me say, understand, Gonzalez KO'd Abner Maris with a left hook. Right? Now, what I want folks to realize is when you're dealing with a fighter who throws a very good jab, which is what Gonzalez does. And when you look at Gonzalez's wingspan, you're going to realize that he has reach. So there's a length dynamic. So you're getting hit with a great jab, and he's far away from you. Now let's just say for a moment that I'm getting hit with a jab. And let's say that I get tired of that. So I start putting a hand up here to block the jab. Right? Let's say I'm trying to knock down a guy's jab. He's throwing it. It's hitting me in the face. I've had enough. I can't afford a puffed up eye, an eye closer, you know, closure against a puncher. So I start putting a hand up here. The problem is Gonzalez has a great left hook. When a guy, whether it's Vladimir Klitschko, whether it's Floyd Mayweather, whether it's Johnny Gonzalez, when a guy has a great jab, and then can throw a great lead hook with the same hand, it's a problem. Because if you're in the pocket, right, you have to guard against 
both. In other words, if I put a hand up here and Johnny drops the left hook on me and hits me on the side of the head, which is what he did to Abner Maris, I could get knocked out like Abner Maris got knocked out. Right? So a lot's happening on this side. Right? He's throwing a jab that's hitting you in the face. You have to worry about that. You have to worry about him coming in behind your guard after he has lulled you to sleep with the jab. Now keep in mind, unlike Oscar De La Hoya, and I don't mean to pick on Oscar, but Oscar, like Marvin Hagler, was fighting inverted. In other words, Oscar was a lefty fighting out of an orthodox stance. Right? For the boxing historians out there, Hagler was a righty fighting out of a southpaw stance. Understand, for those guys, all I have to look at is the lead hand, because that's the dominant hand, right? So I would, if the guy's a headhunter, I would say, okay, he has a good jab, then he comes in with a left hook. I don't have to worry that much about the right hand, right? But understand, when you're dealing with Klitschko, Mayweather, and Johnny Gonzalez, and fighters like that, right, Shane Mosley, you have to worry about the right hand, right? Because the right hand can put you to sleep. In other words, as good as the guy's left is, the guy's actually righty out of an orthodox stance. So understand the problem that has. I'm an opponent. For me, in the pocket. Right? If I'm in the pocket, I'm worried about the jab. So I'm worried about a punch hitting me around the eye. Right? So I have to have a hand up. Then I have to be prepared to duck my head because I have to be worried about the hook. Right? Then, of course, if I forget about the right hand, and let's say I just say, to hell with this guy's left. I'm just going to duck down and stuff. I might find myself ducking into a straight right hand. Right? Saul Alvarez. Another guy who throws a great jab, a great left hook, a great right hand. Now, if I'm out of the pocket, hey, it's great. He's not hitting me with either right or left. Right? If I'm too far away, if I'm one of these guys, Roy Jones in his prime, who can judge distance and who can move around the ring, if I'm Ali and I'm shooting a jab while I'm moving around the ring, Andre Durrell today. Right? Shooting a jab while he's moving around the ring. Okay. Then a Johnny Gonzalez is going to have problems. Right? Because you're going to have to find the opponent to land even the jab. But in my opinion, looking at Gary Russell, and I'll concede, Gary Russell has some of the fastest hands in boxing. But Gary Russell is a guy who likes to hang around the pocket. That's the wrong place to be. Against Johnny Gonzalez. Right? Just look at Gonzalez's KO ratio, folks. It's well above 50%. Understand, pound for pound, Johnny Gonzalez is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. Let's talk about Gary's speed, too. You know, I'm a baseball guy. Right? Of all the team sports out there, to me, baseball is the top shelf. I love the NFL. I love basketball. But when it comes to team sports... Baseball, to me, has the more strategy, right? The most strategy. You know, pitchers with fastballs are at their most effective when they can change speeds, right? A pitcher with a good fastball needs a good changeup. He needs a good breaking ball to frame the fastball, doesn't he? If all he's doing is throwing fastballs, he's not a starting pitcher. He's a relief pitcher. Right? Good luck getting through a nine-inning big league game just throwing fastballs, just throwing pitches the same speed. In my opinion, that's Gary Russell. Right? The best running backs I've seen aren't guys like Chris Johnson who hit the hole and just run fast. No, it's guys like Adrian Peterson, Eric Dickerson, dare I say O.J. Simpson, 
right? Barry Sanders. These are guys who are looking around, right? There's a change of speed dynamic. It's an explosion type dynamic where they're looking around, they see a hole, then they explode, right? You know, you understand that it's the change of pace that makes the top end speed dazzling. I look at Gary Russell, I'll concede Gary Russell is very fast with his hands, but I believe against experienced crafty fighters who have been at the top level for several years which is who Johnny Gonzalez is I believe Johnny Gonzalez is gonna figure out how to dampen that speed with a good jab and timing and then he's gonna figure out how to ignore the speed because he'll adjust to the speed dynamic right understand Gary Russell, in my opinion, is different than Manny Pacquiao in that Pacquiao at least tries to, you know, throw a right jab, tries to act calm, then jumps in with the big left. It'd be different if Pacquiao, every time out, comes in and tries to throw a fast combination. To me, that's Gary Russell. So, I think Johnny Gonzalez is going to win this fight. I wouldn't be surprised if Gonzalez wins by stoppage. It's not how I'm going to bet it, but I wouldn't be surprised if he wins by stoppage. Now, I'll agree that Johnny's chin is not the best. There have been fights where Johnny Gonzalez is dominating the fight, gets hit, and the world changes. He's no longer Johnny Gonzalez, right? When Gonzalez is hurt, he's not the same fighter he is when he's healthy. Right? You'll notice some guys get hurt and are still crafty. Right? Mayweather against Shane Mosley. Other guys get hurt and, oh, they look hurt. Right? They can't grab. They can't do much else. They end up hitting the canvas. The image is gone. That's Johnny Gonzalez. But I question whether Gary Russell is going to be able to land big shots on Johnny Gonzalez. Right? Keep in mind, Russell's the opposite of Gonzalez. Gonzalez, even way back when, is fighting tough, tough, tough opponents. Right? Gary Russell has been pampered in his career. Vesel Lomachenko was a huge step up for Gary Russell in terms of the level of his competition. So I'm going to go with the bigger hitter. I'm going to go with the guy throwing the better jab. I'm going to go with the guy who's fought the better competition. Right? I'm going to go with Johnny Gonzalez in this fight. Don't be surprised if Gary Russell isn't roughed up more than he was by Vassal Lomachenko. Lomachenko is a boxing genius. But Lomachenko beats you by countering and lateral movement. Right? Johnny Gonzalez is different. If Johnny Gonzalez starts to blow you out, he's going to blow you out. Right? Just look at the Abner Maris fight. If he starts landing left hooks, folks, the fight is over. I like Gonzalez here. This is a follow-up video. Uh, I'm expecting Gonzalez to land his jab. I'm expecting Gonzalez to land his left hook. I'm expecting Gonzalez to figure out Russell's hand speed. I'm expecting Gary Russell to hang around the pocket a bit too much. Right? Great hand speed works against non-contenders who are overwhelmed, who hop in the ring and say, oh my God, what's going on here? Right? I don't believe it works at the championship level unless you can frame the speed. I like Gonzalez here. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.